This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast to order, veteran owned coffee company. Uh, they are world class hand roasted micro, brew, micro batch coffee, which means that it is fresh roasted after you order. Uh, they have high quality beans from all across the con- all across the globe, actually, in Colombia, Brazil, uh, Uganda, and and other far off lands. Uh, coffee comes in K cup gift cards available and free shipping over fifty dollars. Check them out over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. What is up, YouTube? What is up, Discord? How you guys doing? A lot of water for me today, Jared. Yeah, that post-COVID cough stuck with me for a minute, too. I can't, I can't shake it, unfortunately, so... If you're watching us on YouTube here, you're going to see a lot of my water bottle today. <laughs> Kyle, we're going to yeah, make fun we're... of Michigan today. What do you think about that? Oh, yes. I'm on the... I have the wrong dang frame up. I forgot to change the frame. <sighs> Hold on. Before we get change started. Change that now. <laughs> before we get started. I have the wrong dang frame up. Now, of course, I, I can't do it quickly under pressure. I can't find the one I need. I'm, I was crumbling under is. the pressure. Right there. there we go. There we go. All right, let's get started, Jared. All right, let's go. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right, Jared. How are you doing today? Good, sir. Uh, you know, I've had a weekend. You've had a weekend? I think we all had a weekend. I, I don't I don't mean that in the literal sense. I'm saying, like, I had a weekend. Snow. Listen, don't don't smirk at me, North Carolina boy. Don't don't you smirk at me. I lost my I'm hot water. At you. I, I lost my I lost my, my hot water heater. Rest in peace. I lost my shovel. Rest in peace. My salt reserves gone. I even broke my push broom, although I think I'm going to be able to save that one. Duct tape? Uh, super glue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're making me laugh. Don't make me laugh. I'm going to cough, Jared. <laughs> I wish I was kidding. Right. This is a silly season. This is where we get to talk about the off season off season of college football here typically a lot about Ohio state, but we're going to switch gears and go to talk about hairball. We're going to talk about Jimmy Harbs, Jared. Oh boy. Uh, we, we talked, we, we talked a little bit about him. Well, not a little bit. We talked a lot about him in last week's episode and we're going to follow suit with just some, which is a lot of news, a lot of reports that came back after we recorded. So we're going to, yeah. we're going to talk uh, a lot about that. Yeah, the what, what see what happened was <laughs> Kyle and I sat down and we were we were prepared to do like an entire episode just talking about the uh the the coach interviews like we we barely even got to any of the assistant coaches uh just cuz we ran out of time. Uh so yeah, it was uh that was the plan and then like ser- like as we were about to record like Harbaugh turned turned down I'm putting that in air quotes for those of you who are uh, listening in the podcast version. Turned down the Vikings job in order to stay at Michigan. Yeah. So that was like the late breaking thing, like right before. And then like we found out like Michigan hired someone else or excuse me, the Vikings hired someone else. Really? Wait a minute. So, so Harbaugh turned you down, but you were ready to make an announcement on someone else like less than an hour later. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. And of course, like I said, we were just recording while this was happening. Uh, so we de- we decided it was worth a revisit. Uh, now that we've had some times to. Now that we've had to, you know, some time to return to Earth, let let some of the news come out and find out exactly what the hell happened at Michigan. Yeah, it's not not the same story, not the same 
not the thing that everybody thought was uh, going to happen where Harbaugh was just going to leave Michigan, go to, go to Minnesota, and then decided to have a change of heart. Like, you know what? I'm going back to Michigan. No, not, not, not really what all happened there. The Vikings never, Jared, the Vikings never made an offer to Harbaugh. No, they did not. No, it's a... Uh, <laughs> Uh, the the first the first like tweet the first report was like Harbaugh informs Michigan that he's decided to stay. I think that was um, Adam Schefter who posted that. I that sounds right. Um, decided to stay. Well, good. That that's nice. I guess the alternative was not coaching or being like a. You know, hold, holding Nick Saban's jockstrap in order to revitalize his career. The old the old career makeover season at Alabama, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's uh, basically, Kyle, now, now, now we're shaking our heads, we're scratching our heads. We're asking ourselves, well, what the hell happened? We had reports. We had reports that Harbaugh was... Uh, just like gonna get the job, like Har- there, there was a it, there were reports it, out of Michigan that Harbaugh was um, prepared to leave. He was going to accept it, the Vikings' job if dare I, dare slash I say, when Jared, it was offered. Dare, dare I say, Jared? He thought he thought he was on third base. Oh well, yeah, because he he thought apparently what happened was that he thought that the interview was a formality. And prepared for it as such. <laughs> he was wrong. <laughs> Mich- Michigan man thought uh, that the job was his, that he, he was on third base and just had to run home. No, nah, uh, he wasn't even on. Se- no, he wasn't even on second base. He hadn't hit the damn ball yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> Exactly. He he was still at the plate. He was at the plate and he whiffed. Apparently just tanks the interview. That's just, that's just crazy to think that you had that kind of mentality going in to an interview and the interviewer, the employer was like, no, we're not on the same page. (laughs) This is an actual interview, not a formality thing. That's just crazy. Stuart, we've already turned that background on Harbaugh. So that's how we're discussing it. I, 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 I hate to break it to you. Harbaugh is now the one who thought he was on third base. Yeah. <coughs> thought he was born on third. Thought the Vikings job was his. Yeah, and what and he, he even told the he even told his staff, like, hey, just take the week off. Yeah. We'll come we'll 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 discuss we'll We'll deal with it when I come back. Yeah, and just, just take just a week off. The, just, just, just take take some time off. You know, you know the important week. Well, it used to be the important yes, week sir. of the year, where it was the um, national signing day. Yeah. Yeah. Just take that. Just take that just week take off. Take the week off. It's okay, guys. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna go flirt. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go flirt with this girl over here. But hey, wife. Just go, just go take a vacation. You go take a vacation, and I'm gonna go take a vacation with this lady over here. Genial- and then we're shocked, ladies and gentlemen. And then we're shocked that that apparently the staff hates him, which isn't new. Like let's not let's not get this twisted. There have been issues between Harbaugh and basically, well, literally everybody else, right? The, the the he's pissed everyone at Michigan off with all of this NFL flirting. Now, why would he be pissing everyone off? Is the question I have because y'all signed that contract, and I, and I'm this is more towards the administration, right? Mm-hmm. Not not towards his assistant coaches, but towards the administration. You guys signed that contract. You signed that contract, which. Anyone who knows anything about how coaching contracts work knows that that contract was made to be broken. That that was a contract made of tissue paper. No buyouts, uh, very low, no, not 
re- by by coaching and by like big boy head coaching college football standards, basically no buyout. Mm-hmm. There was a contract made to be broken, and then Michigan, I think, got got cold feet on this because all of a sudden he beat Ohio State and now they want him. So now they're mad that he's that he's cheating on them. They're mad that he has wandering eyes all of a sudden. Y'all signed the contract. Y'all signed the contract. And, and we, and we, Jared, and I think everybody else thought. Gangland going- says, I don't think he was that popular to begin with. He is batshit crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there, there's been a number of things that we, we joke around and, and, and it, and all of it true too about, I think the biggest thing I was talking to a colleague last, uh, last week, Jared, about this whole Jimmy Arb situation and him and I were just laughing. He was, he's a, he's a Notre Dame fan. So of course we're going to joke around <laughs> with, um, with Michigan here, but, um, but no, I was telling him a lot of the stories about just how oddball Jimmy Harbs is. And the one story is about him sleeping over at a recruiter's house. And he's like, no way. And I said, he didn't know about true. that. <laughs> oh, those Notre Dame fans are such casuals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, this Man. is, this is like nightmare scenario at Michigan right now. They're stuck with Harbaugh. And yeah, like and, I'm saying, and going they're into stuck this with year, yeah, going into this year, we knew like his contract was was set up for him to leave Michigan here. So a lot of people thought, oh, if the opportunity is there, he can he's going to go here. Th- this now was here, always the case. Now here's a question, Jared. Would he have would he have thought differently or pursue other options other than this one here if he didn't beat Ohio State last year? He he wouldn't have he wouldn't have gone he wouldn't have he still be never have beaten Ohio State, never would have gone to the Big Ten Championship, wouldn't have made the playoffs, would he still be there? I think so. I don't think Michigan wants to fire him. Now, Michigan probably would have been much more pushy. Like, yeah, go take that. Do you, do you, do you want to take our jet? You want to take our jet to Minnesota? You, you can have our jet. We'll fly you there. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they probably would have been really pushing him to the NFL as opposed to being like, hey, we got... We got this pile of money. You want to stay? Because, mm-hmm. like, they're riding the high of finally beating Ohio State. Because only in Michigan are the standards so low that one win in seven tries, six tries, seven tries, seven tries, whatever it is, is like all just you're you're falling prey to recency bias, Michigan. You don't know what recency bias is. Mm hmm. Just because you won the last one. <laughs> yeah. Just because you won the last one doesn't mean you're going to start winning them. It's not one in eight, is it? That would be nine tries. And then yeah, that would. He... Well, he's, he's, I think he's one in six with a, with, with a, um... with the duck. Well, let's call duck. it what it is. It was a duck. Yes. Uh, right, Jared, uh, uh, the next thing I want to talk about here is about should we should we add first? Yes, um, we're talking about one of the coaches here, um, but we'll talk about that after we hear from our good friends over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company, located in Harrisburg, Ohio. That is correct, sir. Harrisburg, Kyle. Did you know this is basically almost kind of Toledo? It's it's in the Toledo area. The iron bean caught. Oh, we got a we got the iron bean emote down in the chat. Although that doesn't come through on the on the on the YouTube thing, unfortunately. But yeah, that's right. We got an iron bean emote down in the Discord chat uh, because we rep. Because we rep. Uh, Buckeyes access talk about the Odin. Yeah, let's talk about the Odin. The Odin is a dar- oh, what is this? Oh, it was kind of I, boring. I, yeah, I got I got this iron- from ordering ordering the recent. A couple of coffees. I thought that was a sticker at first. Is that a sticker or is that a patch? Nope, that's that is an actual patch, Jared. That is red. I'm jealous. Uh, let's talk about the Odin coffee like a Viking. Organic Ugandan volcanic soils feed the fire in this single origin dark roast. 
Odin is the coffee that will keep you fighting long after you should have gone to Valhalla. Iron Beans Odin is a darker coffee made with 100% Arabica beans to give you the edge to slay the day. Uh, USD certified organic and fair trade certified to ensure you're getting the highest quality coffee beans. Taste smooth, never bitter flavors with subtle notes of earth and chocolate. Subtle notes of earth and chocolate. Low, it's, it's low in acidity, but don't be afraid. That does not take away from the taste or the strength. Uh, it's 100% natural. Um, and like almost all of their coffees, is available both whole, gr whole grain and ground. Kyle, should I talk? Should I talk about the Loki? I'm only going to talk about one more. Should I go Loki or Thor? Loki or Thor? Uh, well, you went with Odin, so let's go with Thor. I, that doesn't make any sense, but sure, let's do it. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to try and figure out exactly what you meant by that. Thor, thunder and lightning will course through your veins, bleed black. Uh, this is a medium dark coffee. It's, it's it's darker than a medium, but not quite a dark. Um, Iron Beans Thor is a medium dark roast coffee made with 100% arabica beans. Just like the Odin, it is USD certified. Uh, organic and it's also fair trade certified to ensure you're getting the highest quality coffee beans um, taste smooth never bitter flavors with a, a subtle thunderstorm and lightning it tastes like thunderstorm and lightning how could you go wrong with that uh, yeah, just, and like I said, just, just like the Odin, it's fair trade certified USD organic. Uh, it is available both ground and whole bean. Uh, and Kyle, the Thor is currently on sale. And did you know you can save an additional 13% off by doing a subscribe and save service? So, uh, you can find <laughs> Ganglin says weather talk. <laughs> you make sun, you made sun card proud. With that one, gangland. Uh, you can find your new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, Jared. Let's talk about, we talked about Jimmy Harbs and how he thought he, thought he was on third base here. And let's talk about what came after that here. We, we called it here. You have the title here, Mutiny in Michigan. Yeah, I'm not going to, I wanted to name the episode Mutiny in Michigan, but I figured by the time we got this out, like it probably would have been done a thousand times. So I'm going to have to go to something else for the actual title of the episode, but let's call the segment Mutiny in Michigan. Um, yeah, uh, Josh Gaddis, the offensive coordinator uh, for Michigan, has left. Uh, he is taking a parallel move. He's taking a parallel move to Miami, which quite frankly, like, Michigan and Miami really shouldn't be on the same level as far as football goes. Now, are they or aren't they a different conversation, a different day, I suppose. But they they really, it really should be Michigan up here and and Miami down here, right? Well, um, it depends, depends on what part you're talking about. If you're talking about the program itself, yes. If you're talking about everything, including location, eh, maybe it is parallel. <laughs> I uh, Miami is overrated in my opinion, but I don't know. Maybe catch some flack for that one. Uh, but yeah, the uh, Josh Gaddis, of course, just won the uh, Broyles Award, which if you don't know, is the award given to the assistant of the year. Um, it is what hurricane fans are listening to this loop cast. No, it's for my Miami slander just as like a city, not, not as a university. Um, yeah, uh, and apparently Josh Gaddis sends a uh, sends a text. Um, oh crap! I thought I had that one in the show notes. I might need to find that one. Um, but uh, uh, Aaron Torres, uh, I do have this one in the notes. Um, essentially said uh, he pissed off Harbaugh. Essentially saying that Josh Gaddis had as. Uh, is uh, pissed off with Harbaugh over the last month and was looking to get out. Now, what a turn of events if you're Josh Gaddis, because there was a lot of rumble that when, which turned out to be if, when Harbaugh left for, well, first it was like the Raiders, right? And then it was like, oh, okay, well, actually, maybe it's, 
it's it's the Vikings, but like everyone was preparing for Harbaugh to leave, essentially. And it was uh, not received well for, by many many people. Uh, but but there are a lot of people who are just like, okay, you know what we do? We just we just take Josh Gaddis. We we basic we're gonna Ryan Day this shit. We're just gonna Ryan Day this shit. We're just gonna take our offensive coordinator. We're gonna make him the head coach, and we're gonna we're gonna try and keep this train rolling. Because again, in Michigan, one good season's a train. I don't know if one Kyle does does an engine is is a, is a single car train a train, or is that just like an engine? Does that count as a train? That's just the train engine, right? Is not the train the idea of the it's train is that it's train. multiple it's part of the the train. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like one good season does not a season not not one good season does not a train make. I'm it's not, not a train unless kidding. they're trained together, right? Okay, Kyle. Kyle does not want to engage with my shenanigans. No, nope. nope. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> it's not a good analogy, there, Jared. <laughs> no, it's not an analogy. <laughs> Literally, the idea of something being a train is that there is multiple of it. There you go. It isn't a semi truck if it isn't holding anything. That's not true, because that's what makes it a semi. <laughs> Because it's because it doesn't have a bed. It, it, <laughs> ah, I need right, to move uh, forward. Move on, move on, all right, move it, moving on here. So there's there's a lot of there's a lot of Michigan fans right now just saying, oh, he wasn't in on the, the program and oh, good riddance and blah blah blah. As Jared said, like he won the assistant coach of the year and brought and was brought all, and could have been the head coach at Michigan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and. He did he did really good things compared to what Michigan's offense has been the past number of years, which has been pitiful. Uh, let's see here. Now, to, to be fair, he has been the coordinator for three years, so he was the coordinator for two of those offenses. Just twenty twenty fifth twenty fifth nationally this year in yards, fifteenth nationally in rushing yards. Uh, let's see, sixteenth in scoring, scoring thirty five point eight points per game. That's we haven't seen that kind of offense in Michigan in a very long time, very long time. And, and he's just, just going to up and leave because of, just because of Harbaugh's decision to try to try to flirt with the NFL. And it's a, this is the consequence here. This is uh, from Tom Van Heron um, in a text to some Michigan players. Josh Gaddis said, Unfortunately, the past few weeks has told me a different story. Uh, man, unfor okay, quote. Unfortunately, the past few weeks has told a different story to me about the very little appreciation I have here from administration. In life, I would never advise anyone to be where they are not wanted. That 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 is the Broyles Award winner right there, and he feels unwelcome and unwanted. So I have to wonder, since he says administration, if he says administration, I have to wonder, is that bigger than just Harbaugh? Yeah. Because there was a lot of buzz that maybe, maybe Gaddis could have been promoted to head coach. It, that text tells me potentially otherwise. Josh Gaddis, and let's be very clear, I don't know if he, I don't know if he's like, like if we're taught like Michigan would be different because he'd be like an in-house promotion. Right. But are you going to tell me Josh Gaddis has not at this point earned a shot at a head coaching job? Has he not? <laughs> Gang Lane says he said he called plays at Bama and Saban said, no, that doesn't mean he called all. I, I don't know. I don't know anything about what happened with him at Bama. But I'm saying I think Gaddis, and I'm not I'm not saying necessarily like a Michigan level job, but you're telling me Josh Gaddis couldn't get a look from, I don't know, Tennessee. Not that Tennessee was you know, but you know what I'm saying? Like that sort of second tier program mm -hmm. in a big boy conference. I think Josh Gaddis has earned a, an NFL or excuse me, a 
Power Five level head coaching job. I uh, Tennessee fans can come get it. I don't care. I'll 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 fight a Tennessee fan. I'll knock the remaining tooth out of their head. I don't give a shit. Um. Yeah. So that's. It's full blown like. And again, his open flirting with the NFL uh, pissed off a lot of people, even though the people at Michigan, like, you ever over, someone tells you something and then you sort of like over respond to it as, as a way to try and prove that you're not mad when actually you are, but you don't want the, other, but, you, but you're like, you're ready to move on. You're ready to move on. You're still a little bit mad. It's not okay. But you say, no, 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 no. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's really, it's no big deal. I promise. I swear. It's no big deal. And you almost like over explain it and over go over the top because you're trying to just make a thing that was a deal and turn it into a thing. That's not a big deal. I promise. I swear. It's not a big deal. Like when Harbaugh said he was coming back, like every single Michigan account tweeted. Like they went overboard to just sort of be like, we're not upset and we're happy and he's back and we're definitely not mad. Let's let's make make sure to tweet from the football account, the athletics department account, the official university account. Let's tweet from all the accounts and make sure everyone knows how not upset we are by everything. And then Ohio State fans followed suit and it said, we're happy too. <laughs> yeah. Which I saw some like I saw some real confused I saw some I saw some real confused Michigan fans who were just like, Why are you happy about this? I'm like one one win out of seven doesn't get us like like we're we're mad, don't get us wrong. We fired the entire defensive staff over it. Don't get <laughs> don't don't get it mixed up. We're not gonna let it happen yeah. again. But at the same time, we, we know who Harbaugh is. He is who we think he is. One, one, one win, one loss is not Oof. going to change our opinion of that. And by the way, Kyle, Gangland, it also should be noted. G G Gangland says Jim Harbs is, is Michigan's John Cooper. Uh, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like Ohio state had really good teams under John Cooper. Like they just couldn't quite get over that hump. I, I don't know. If, I don't know outside of maybe his first year or two. Cooper had really, really good Ohio State teams consistently. Consistently. Harbaugh can't say the same at Michigan. Like, we shit on Cooper because he couldn't beat Michigan, and you have to beat Michigan. But, like, yeah, exactly, Buckeye Zach. John Cooper had, had one, national title-capable teams. Yeah, have you seen a Michigan team yet that you thought was, like, a legit national contender? Because I haven't. Yeah, he had one losing record, and that was his first year. And then his second, and then his second to the last year, he went five hundred. Yeah, it's. I'm not. Yeah, it's. No, that, that's an to say that, that to say that Harbaugh equals Cooper is an enormous insult to Cooper. Enormous in, insult to Cooper. Mm -hmm. And again, I get, I get why we why we've turned him into a punchline, but he, he made, he had some really good teams at Ohio state. Like yeah. I get it, but still, all right, back to Michigan. Um, mm -hmm. Now not going out with as much flair with as much fireworks, but still gone. Nonetheless, uh, Mike McDonald, the defensive coordinator from this last season goes back to the Baltimore Ravens, essentially uh, Harb's brother, also Harb's sane Harb's, Sane Harbs uh, basically loaned his defensive coordinator to Michigan for a year and then, and then brought him back. Like, okay, no, no, I, I need you in Baltimore. Please come home. <laughs> Listen, sometimes a brother got to do a brother a solid and loan him a defensive coordinator for a year. Sometimes that's just how things are. That's your brother. That's your brother. If you're if your brother's not willing to loan you a defensive coordinator for a year, that's not your brother. So, okay, here I have a defensive coordinator. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, what? He's being a dick? Oh, he and he's flirting with other jobs and he's not keeping you guys informed and he's treating you like a commodity and he's not treating you like a human being 
and he's treating you as like you're completely disposable and you'd like to come home. Yeah. Okay. Come back to Baltimore. Actually. Like we had, a, we had a, have you, have you seen, have you seen Joe Burrow? You see Joe Burrow? We need our defensive coordinator back. Come on back to Baltimore. We're, we're going to figure some stuff out here and we're going to try and defeat Joe Burrow. Yeah. So yeah, Michigan is down two coordinators. Um, a head coach who has made it clear that he does not want to be there. Like he wanted, he wanted the Minnesota job. Congrats on second prize, Michigan. You are once again, even when you win the big 10, you somehow still find yourself second place in the heart of your own coach. Ouch. Kyle, I think, I think that's where we end it right there. All right. Uh, we do have one. We do have one ask Swiftcast question unrelated to everything that we talked about. Uh, Buckeye Zach Please. asks, "Where do you perceive is the best available program for Seven Banks to go in the in the transfer portal?" I think I think Cincinnati. I, first off, I don't know anything. I haven't read anything. Um, but like, doesn't Cincinnati make sense? I mean, Seven Banks loved Coach Combs. Where's Coach Combs? Cincinnati has a tremendous defense. Cincinnati just lost both of their corners. Both of Cincinnati's corners are heading to the NFL. Coach Combs went to Cincinnati. Seven Banks really likes Coach Combs. I presume Coach Combs likes Seven Banks. It makes a lot of sense. It just makes... Like, again, I don't, I know nothing. I haven't, like, if there's, like, I know that, like, 24-7 and on three and in the other places have, like, transfer portal trackers where they do their crystal ball and whatever else is. Yeah. I haven't looked at it. I, I have not been following it whatsoever. I, I, there's probably people listening to this podcast who might have a more informed answer than me right now because I, quite frankly, have spent zero brain, brain cells on it. But Cincinnati just makes sense, right? It does, yeah. Um, still, I, I think that or, yeah, any Mac school. Huh? Um, yeah, I think Cincinnati makes the most logical sense, but I don't know. It, it It's all up in the air. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Gangland says, I don't think Fick wants him. Again, like, that's that's information I don't have. Yeah. I'm just trying, I'm just trying to, I be, I'm just saying like, well, his, his, def his cornerbacks coach is that he had and who recruited him to Ohio state, by the way, is now at a different school, a, a, a school that is in need of corners. It, it just makes a lot of sense. It's, it's, it's kind of like, I don't know. Let's say for example, Ohio state was having some issues at safety, um, and then they hired a defensive coordinator and, and then that, def and then uh, one of the safeties at the defensive coordinator's old school uh, was looking for a new spot. And then he decided to come to Ohio state. Like, I know that that's like a, a weird hypothetical situation, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it just, it just makes a lot of sense. It just makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Right, but again, Jared, may, that... maybe maybe Combs doesn't actually want him. Maybe Fick doesn't like him for one reason. I have no idea. Maybe he doesn't want to go to Cincinnati. Maybe he's dead set on going to a school in X region of the country. Maybe he's mm -hmm. dead set on, you know, maybe getting away. From, maybe he doesn't like Combs. I don't know. I don't know any of the answers to any of that. I'm just, I've, I've, I've said what I've said. All right, Jared, that is all. That is all we have for today's episode. Hey, come hang out in our Discord server. It's a lot of fun. Um, and uh, if you wouldn't mind, maybe throw us uh, maybe like three bucks a month over at uh, patreon.thesloopcast.com. You get early access to episodes. You get access to our... Um, we, we typically do it weekly. We'll take a week off every once in a while, but typically every week we do a... Um, a, an exclusive episode just for Patreon listeners. So, uh, th and those are, those are pure chaos. Those are pure chaos. Uh, so, I mean, maybe that encourages you, maybe that discourages you, but they're, they're, they're chaos. And we, we, I don't know, Kyle, I think it's one of my favorite ones to actually do. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, uh, again, it's like $3 a month if you don't want like yet another monthly whatever on your credit card. You can do a one-time payment. Uh, it, it actually even saves you something like 12 or so percent uh, if you just pay for the entire year up front. So I think it's like 32 or something. If you, if you, so it's like you pay us $32, to, $32 and that gives you premium access for the entire calendar year. Is that a bad deal? I think not. It also gives you um, access if you're a part of our Discord or if you want to be a part of our Discord to like the private channels which um, is sometimes where I'll share some information. Not that I'm a, I'm not an Ohio State insider by any means, but you know, we, we do share a little bit more information in there and we do uh, you get to join the live chat and you get to get to know gangland and sun card and Stuart and, and Zach, of course, and a bunch of the other uh, hooligans that we have uh, in our, in our discord server. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, nothing too much here i do I do have here from the ohio state athletics social media here they posted their top 48 fields that they're going to um choose from for to put out on the ohio state football field next year 48 jared you know we make fun of recruits when they when they release a top 12 <laughs> like I don't, I don't care how sought after a recruit is when they drop a top 12, guess what? We don't talk about it. Yeah. We, and I think, we, uh, we I don't think... play that game and Ohio state's dropping a top 48. And I'm just, I'm just, and listen, I'm not going to call out any of these specifically. I don't want to call out any of these specifically. Cause I know like Is someone, they're, they're fan, they're fan made, they're, they're fan made. Fan-made. Someone went to a lot of work to submit them. I'm not going to call out any of these in particular, but you know, I say it's not actually considering some of these. No, like, like the ones where it's like anything that's not natural turf color. Yeah. Like with all due respect to the two that are in the final 48 that are red or at well, least partially red, or even, even the one that ha- or even the happening. one that has the the stripe down the middle too. I don't think the stripe down the middle is bad. Now, it would it be as big as that? Maybe it's a little bit smaller, but I don't, I don't mind the stripe down it, the middle. It, it it would make sense to keep it like the hash lines like they have it there. And you know college football hash lines are really wide. That's true. That's true. Uh but yeah, I really like some of these some of these they're they're just they're not happening. I don't know why they included them. I, maybe to get attention, maybe to get people to retweet it and say, "Oh, can you believe Ohio? Oh my God, God, Ohio State's actually considering putting in a scarlet turf. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Ohio State's actually considering." And then, like, you get people talking and shit, right? Because Brutus is Brutus is coming on the field. <laughs> what? A giant Brutus? Thing? Nope, nope, not 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 calling him out by name. Uh, but yeah, just, so, so, some of, yeah, some of them I like though, but yeah, be interested in what changes or subtle changes. I, I really think that's what's going to be subtle change that Ohio State's going to do on the field on the on the field for next year. But we will, we shall see. Yeah, um, I really like the way some of them do like a full red outline around the field, like outside of the playing field. Uh, a few of them do that, and I really like that. And the other thing, kind of, I wonder kind of, if they include some of these so that later they can be like, well, we didn't choose any one of them. What we actually did was we took this idea like, from that one and this idea from that one and this idea from mm-hmm. that one. Um, I, I can't help but wonder if that's probably what they're doing and maybe why some of the – listen, I, I'm going to say this. And I'm not, I know Ohio State's not going to do it, but among these submissions is the solid gray field. And I kind of like it. I'm not saying Ohio State would actually do it. But I kind of like the solid gray field. Well, like like you're saying, it's like it's a solid like red around or red and gray. Like there is one towards the middle there. That has, no, I'm, like, I'm, li- I'm literally Scarlet, talking like, about Scarlet the one. On one Scarlet on one side on the out of bounds and gray on the out, out of bounds. 
think of it kind of like the the uh, basketball court where they have that yeah, yeah. scarlet around there too. I, I kind of like that. Well, and there's a couple of them where <laughs> like basically if you're not inside the actual playing field, because like there's all of that, and, and I'm putting grass in quotations here. You have all of that grass that's not actually a part of the playing field. That's just sort of around the playing field. Um, I would, I think it'd be cool if they made all of that like gray or red or some variants thereof. I, I, I just do want the actual playing field to still be green. Yep. But if like, again, all of the ancillary grass, all of the not between the boundaries grass, if they made all of that scarlet or gray, I think that'd be cool or black. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be cool. Now, here's the thing, though. Will they actually go red or black in any large proportion? Because we already ran into it because, man, those those end zones when they first put them in were like red. They were hyper red. And then they they faded after not too long. Uh, so I, I can't help but wonder if. If they're going to put red in again, that they don't have some sort of plan or something to mm -hmm. protect or preserve the color in it because they faded out bad. They looked real yeah. cool at first, but they faded out bad with those solid red end zones. Yep. All right, Jared, that is it. Go ahead and hit us home. Yeah, uh, tonight's ending music, Kyle, we're going back to the Cincinnati bands. Uh, we're going to do Cincinnati bands this week in honor of the Bengals trying to break that Super Bowl curse. Uh, and uh, we're going to a band called Harbor, which is spelled H-A-R-B-O-U-R. Harbor, uh, they are, Kyle, get this, from Cincinnati. Um, they're sort of a... They're, they're an alt rock band. They're an alt rock band from Cincinnati. So, excuse me, you can check them out yourself um, by going to their Bandcamp page, which I will link. Um, if you're listening to the audio version of this podcast, you can just stick around and you'll hear it for yourself. If you're listening to the YouTube version of this podcast, then you can go ahead and click the link down in the show notes to listen to the song. So, with all that being said, Kyle, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer. I, I, I lost it. Drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Harbor. <laughs> 